my activism on this campus, my experience on this campus, especially when you say that I don't, I'm not involved in this, even though we've been in meetings together at the same time, and you're on the record. How is that, that corruption that, on my part, though? Yes, that's don't mind me asking. So that's just, that's, I, in my opinion, that, that's lying, right? That's, that's something the establishment has always done. You've seen them mischaracterize candidates. You've seen them mischaracterize act, uh, ideas, and I think that that's something that's clearly no, been done by the Crone campaign. I wouldn't call 43% voter turnout uh, establishment. I wouldn't call what we just went to, uh, the march, the take back the night as establishment. Those people are involved. Those are the same people who come to Stor to SG events. I understand people are busy, but there is a significant portion of this campus who are involved in on-campus discussions, and it's not a small cabal of people in the back row who are deciding things. Tim, how many people showed up to the last diversity committee meeting? No, I can't attend all meetings, but how many people show up to the last SGA Senate? How many? None, except for senators, though. So it, isn't that the exact definition of the establishment? It's a few people on this campus getting out and kind of making these decisions before talking about uh, what exactly matters and talking to the students. Uh, I, I went to a, a, a diversity committee meeting a couple months ago to talk about the five-point plan that we brought up. I was the only student there. And when you have small groups of people making decisions uh, that affect the entire campus, I think it's a very dangerous uh, precedent to set. So I'm going to go back to a uh, question for Tim. Um, which you've touched on a little bit as well. Um, in a recent article, you're quoted as saying, quote, what experience does Ben have on campus? The answer is none, end quote. But you and Ben are both involved in some of the same campus groups that you've talked about here in this uh, forum. Isn't this charge unfair? Uh, which campus groups, just in general? What campus groups uh, do you want to? John Model, you went together. I mean, you stayed together for a week in New York. We've uh, worked together on several events at the Martin Institute. Uh, in fact, you usually sit at the same table. I consider you a pretty good friend. and. I'm kind of disappointed to see the, the tone you've taken in this so far. Um, just in terms of Molly Wynn isn't necessarily what this question comes down to. This is about leadership experience. Um, you know, being the chair of the, the former the college Republicans and uh, being on community committee doesn't doesn't necessarily admit allow you to understand the struggles that students actually face, you know, in terms of the housing selection process. Um, things like that. So but maybe I you can rephrase the question that uh, does Ben have the right experience to be the mayor of Martin? I don't think so. So, can I follow sure. up here? So, are you implying that because I'm a commuter, I can't uh, understand what exactly students go through on this no. campus? Because that's that's exactly the argument you just made, right? I can make the same case here that a resident on campus doesn't understand the struggles of what a commuter goes through. Every single morning, I have to wake up, drive here 45 minutes. I spend my day from 8 a.m. to almost 11:30 every day talking about the issues with voters, getting in arguments and discussions about ideas, and encouraging uh, students to get involved in their education on this campus. And uh, the implication that uh, somehow because I don't live here, I don't understand the, the ideas and the struggles that students face that live on campus, I think is unfair and it's the type of politics of the establishment. Well, the thing is though, there are plenty of students who are commuters who are just are way, are more involved than you. Mike Middleton, for example, he's currently commuter senator. Candace Crocker, my sisters are commuters. I understand the struggles of commuters. Um, I, I'm not a commuter myself and I, I don't actually, I rephrase that, I don't necessarily understand all the struggles. I understand that you do face a unique set of challenges, though. I'm glad you brought up Mike Milton actually managing his campaign for our re-election for Senate, so make sure you guys vote for him on uh, when, the, when the ballot opens. <laughs> Maybe I can just ask sort of a final question on that thread, which is in the presidential race, uh, there been chargers that uh, opponents are not qualified to be president, so let me just pose that simple question to both of you. Is your opponent qualified to be the mayor of Martin, yes or no? Mike, uh, I mean, uh, which Ben has, uh, now you're making me think of Mike, Ben has experience. I think he is qualified to be um, the leader of uh, the mayor of Martin. The mayor, thank you. And I'll ask you the same question. Is Tim qualified to be the mayor of Martin? I think Tim's a great uh, person, great friend. We just have different ideas. Of course he's qualified. It's just uh, I think our ideas differ when it comes down to it at the, in the ballot box. The next question for Ben. Uh, the increasing use of social media in politics has sparked discussion about its proper use. You frequently engage in heated conversations, and some have accused you of unsubstantiated claims. Is your social media activity appropriate for the office of mayor? Uh, I think it is. Uh, I have strong beliefs uh, that I've cultivated over a long experience of activism and education, uh, but I've also made it pretty clear that uh, based on just the campaign that I've built and the team that I've built around me, that I'll, make, I'll remain unbiased when I make decisions as mayor. Uh, my team's got Democrats, it's got Republicans, it's got people to the left of the Democratic Party, people that are middle and moderate, and I think that uh, the wealth of knowledge that I've accrued is going to help you to make uh, good decisions. Yep. Well, I, I think in that this case you actually made the question. Um, in terms of your social media posts, there have been you know blatant 
making fun of people who are victims of sexual assault or PTSD, or the use uh, of the hashtag trigger warning. Wow, that's a, that's a blatantly false accusation. I'd love for you to give me an example of any time in my life that I've ever made an accusation against or made a joke about someone who was a victim of sexual assault or PTSD. That's blatantly incorrect, and that's a lie. I have friends and family who have been affected by things like that, and to make that accusation angers me. Do you, do you have an example that you want to cite? I have 11 examples. Contact my Go campaign. Let's do, why don't we uh, get some specific Hold on my phone right now. Or, I mean, the use of the hashtag trigger I think, warning. I think, the, I think the example you're referencing to, because your campaign actually tweeted about it a few times, just didn't want to tag us in it, uh, was in reference to people talking about the Trump campaign and, cap and being triggered by capitalism. No, Not this was before that. Oh, that sure. Give before me, that. Please give me an example, because I, let's, I think we should have this out. Because this Look, is, there's, there's this over is 11 the examples of it. So, you let's, can, so give, me a, give me a specific example, right? You can't make an accusation like that that I'm not, that I, I like, for make example, fun of people of, that are victims a, of sexual assault. After we sat outside just now, stood there and walked and stood as a community against active activism like that. Look, I'm not going to name a name, but you know the person I'm speaking about, and you made fun of them using the, the, the hashtag trigger warning. And this was before the you, Trump thing. You, and still haven't, you still haven't made it. Actually, no, we're not, we're not, like, hold on. We're not going to further uh, sort of put get bogged down in this without some examples. Does anyone on the current campaign have an example? They can say it. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Palin was a victim of sexual assault. Hashtag trigger warning. Hey man, I'm going to flip flop on my political beliefs and be annoyingly vocal about it. And then cower and hide from facts when people get annoyed about it. Hope that doesn't expedite up your safe space or microaggress you too much for us. No, in, in my that was opinion, on February so, 9th. In my opinion, okay, that is, thank you. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So uh, the exact example in that situation uh, was a student had called me a racist for being a Republican. I got very upset over that because I take allegations of racism against me uh, very personally. I've grown up and dealt with racism on a personal level for a long time. So when someone says that just because of my political views, I'm racist and I'm triggering others because of my beliefs, I get kind of upset. And I apologize for being kind of animated about this right now, but these are personal insults to my to my ideas, my beliefs, and my values. In this, in this exact case, that's not true. This is about a student in Model UN. Yep. You, yeah. And I'm, I mean, I don't want to get into specific names, but that person has. Yeah. It's documented that they have. We've gotten into discussions about it. I actually apologized to her after it for saying, hey, sorry I got a little bit upset that you called But why me post this on social media? Why, why do that? Why not just talk to her instead? I did, and she uh, didn't want to have the conversation. Uh, Michael Needle is one of my so good friends. So well, then, now we're into choices about platforms of how people want to communicate, which I, I'm not sure I want to get into, just because I, I don't know, that's central to the argument. Any final word just on uh, uh, on on, uh, on the issue of, of, of uh, use, use of social media and if you were in the position of being Mayor Martin? Look, I think social media is a very valuable platform. Uh, it can be used for good. I've used it as a professional outlet, both on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, ideas like that. I think it's a great way to modernize communication, uh, and I think that it's going to be very useful going forward. And final word? Um, I think in terms of this instance, this is not the kind of person that we want to be Mayor Martin who blatantly attacks people on social media. Like, do it privately, right? Okay. Um, Tim, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Tim, a question for you. Um, in a presidential season that favors outsiders, why do you think that your, uh, you know, your perceived establishment candidacy uh, and your support of Secretary Clinton, who is arguably the establishment candidate, will resonate with voters here at Stonehill. So voters here at Stonehill are not worried about this campaign in terms of this campaign. Let me clarify. The presidential campaign does not have um, an effect on the Mayor of Martin. The Mayor of Martin is a nonpartisan campaign. I believe both me and Ben have stressed our, our need to be bipartisan in this regard. And, you know, I, I do personally support Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, she is perceived as a, an establishment, but when it comes down to it, you know, I expect people to respect my opinion in terms of who I'm voting for, and I will respect theirs. I mean, 45% of this campus voted for Bernie Sanders in our, in our caucus. Um, I mean, I'm not worried. I think that they're going to judge Ben and I based off of our policy positions here on campus, not who we support. Ben? Uh, I mean, I think it's interesting that you your candidate is opposed by 45% of this campus as well. And uh, look, I think when it comes down to it at the end, uh, the this campaign should be about our ideas and not about the establishment kind of trying to force their will on the people. Great. Um, final question from the prepared questions from the campaigns. Um, and uh, this one, Ben, is to you. Uh, your campaign, it, it sort of drills down a little bit in the last discussion. Sure. Uh, your campaign says it's the more inclusive. Some, though, complain that you mock the concepts of microaggression and trigger warnings. 
Do you agree that these concepts, uh, without getting back into the discussion yeah, sure. about proposals, do you agree that these concepts are an important part of fostering inclusion in the Stonehill community? Uh, so especially with microaggressions, uh, my personal opinion on them is what it comes down to is based on my experience uh, as a first generation citizen who's kind of grown up in uh, pretty racially charged environments. Uh, I've actually dealt with racism on a pretty personal level. I've been denied service. I've seen my mother get denied a license because in the wake of 9-11 because, quote, we don't serve people like you at the DMV. Uh, my opinion on race is a lot different than a lot of people. And I think that this discussion that I kind of ignore microaggressions or I ignore trigger warnings, kind of in itself, it's just suppressive of my opinions and my views based on what I've dealt with and, and uh, lived through myself, uh, especially with issues of microaggressions when it comes to the Indian community. I think a lot of the, the stuff that comes up is, is not necessarily a, a, an aggression. It's more of a, an issue of ignorance, and I'd much rather educate the community than try to sense their views. And I think the way to, to kind of deal with the issue of racism is not to censor views, but it's to change hearts and minds. No, I, I agree with that. I, you know, I feel sorry for you and your family and, you know, and along those lines. Um, I think the concern here, though, is um, whether or not your use of, I mean, we're not going to get back into the social media post, is something that Stonehill wants. I mean, Stonehill overwhelmingly does not agree with um, the use of microaggression and stuff like that. And, I mean, no, we're not going to get back into the social media. So let me ask you this question just as, as, just as an out question. Um, we, there's a lot of talk uh, in certain circles about a PC community, how, how PC we are in, the, in the, the American community. On a scale of 0% to 100%, how PC is America? Tim. Not 100 being the most PC? Mm -hmm. I, I would say it's more so than it used to be. Uh, I personally, I pride myself as being a moderate Democrat. Uh, I believe that you know freedom of thought, freedom of expression shouldn't be suppressed. I, I personally think that we need to continue to have discussions uh, we shouldn't censor people just because of what they say offends us. Um, and this is without putting a definition on what yeah. you think PC is, just of course. Um, I would say it's probably you know, 50, 80, somewhere around there. 50 to 80. Yeah, it's a big range then. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's about 50%. I think that the First Amendment's a pretty uh, expansive amendment, and the, the, the idea of free speech is very important. Uh, I think political, the political correct culture I think it has the right goals. It just doesn't necessarily uh, carry out its... Uh, ideals in the right way. Do you want to define for us who the PC culture is? Uh, I think the political, politically correct culture, I think its goal is to make sure that everyone stays in an inclusive environment, but they do it in a way that is kind of, is, is censors other people's views, and I think that that just kind of pushes uh, issues of race uh, away. If, the, if you look at, if you looked at it a year ago, people wouldn't have, you wouldn't have thought that people would support Donald Trump, and that guy is blatantly racist and bigoted. And what we're realizing now is that people are pushing back against this politically correct culture. If I was if I was in charge of this five or six years ago, I'd want to discuss these issues with them and change their hearts and minds, not oppress their views. Do you want to name members of the PC culture? I reiterate exactly what Ben said. I mean, members of it are, are people who, uh, which we call it, are, ju are just general people who feel oppressed. I think that their their heart is in the right place. I think that their um, objectives and their and their steps towards getting there are not. But uh, so to follow up on that, right? But your accusation uh, prior to this was that I somehow made it, made fun of this culture and the microaggressions and trigger warnings and all these things. But you just changed your opinion on that in, in the last thirty seconds. You said that you just you just said that you disagree with their methods and tactics while attacking me for disagreeing with their methods and tactics. The difference is that you're a, a public official or you're trying to become a public official. Uh, public officials are not necessarily.